In this question, we have been asked to identify the space okay, that is shown in the figure that is marked by this arrow here. So this space between the deciduous lateral incisor and the primary canine, okay, we have been asked to identify whether this is primate space, sluice waste, leeway space or the incisor liability. Now what we can identify from this image is that the deciduous dentition is present in the arch, right? And we have to identify the space that is present in the deciduous dentition. So in the deciduous dentition, there are two types of spaces which are present, which are both normal and they are both desirable, okay? The first type of space is the physiological space. And the second type of space is known as the primate space. Okay, so how are they different? The physiological spaces are also known as developmental spaces. Developmental spaces. Okay, developmental or physiological and they are generalized spaces. Okay, so they are generalized spacing that is present between all of the teeth between within the deciduous dentition. So here you can see the spacing here, 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 right? So there is this generalized spacing that is present between the deciduous dentition. So these spaces that is a physiological or developmental spaces which is present as a generalized uh, finding within the arch is known as the physiological spaces and this is uh, a desirable feature in the deciduous dentition. Okay, because this tells us that there is going to be enough space within the arches to accommodate the larger permanent teeth which are going to erupt. Okay, so on an average, the amount of space that is seen due because of the developmental spaces is about 4 mm in the maxilla and about 3 mm in the mandible. Okay, this again is important. They could ask you the uh, values as well, okay, for the spacing. Now, whenever there is a uh, generalized spacing present like this, Baum has cl uh, classified this type of a dentition, okay, as spaced dentition. So, the spacing is present. This is spaced dentition or open dentition. And if there is no spacing that is present, then it is uh, called a closed dentition or an unspaced dentition. Okay. Now, when there is a closed dentition, okay, this tells us that there is a likelihood that there might be some tooth size arch length discrepancy in the permanent dentition which could lead to crowding within the arches okay so when you see that there's a closed dentition present in the deciduous teeth it is something that you need to keep an eye out for okay so this was the physiological spaces which is the generalized spaces the second type of space that you will see in the deciduous dentition is something known as the primate space primate space now this primate space is known by many names it is also known as simian spaces it is known as anthropoid spaces. It's also known as bomb spaces. Okay, because it was given by bomb. So why is it called simian spaces? It be is because it is uh, it it appears similar to the spaces that are seen in the dentition of primates. Okay, that's why it's also known as primate spaces or anthropoid spaces or simian spaces. Now these spaces which are present here, so uh, they are characteristically seen mesial to maxillary okay so mesial maxillary okay and distal to the mandibular canines okay now one way to remember this is m stands for mesial m stands for maxillary d stands for distal and d is present in mandibular okay so m for maxillary and d for mandibular d this is how I remember it. Okay, so it is easier to remember. Now, this, this is the uh, primary canines, right? So, mesial in maxillary and distal in mandibular. And how these uh, primate spaces help is they are utilized during the early mesial shift of molars. So we know that in the deciduous dentition, usually we see a flush terminal type of relationship between the molars. Okay, so this mesial step uh, or this uh, uh, early mesial shift that is seen in the molars, okay, it utilizes this space, okay, to go from a flush terminal or from an end on relationship into a class one relationship. So when the molar relationship becomes class one, by utilizing primate spaces that is the early mesial shift and when it utilizes the leeway spaces that is the late mesial shift 
okay now this again is an important question okay that is what is the leeway space what is the leeway space what is the amount of leeway space that is seen in the maxillary arch the amount of leeway space that is seen in the mandibular arch okay now leeway space is the space or is the difference in the mesiodistal dimension between the deciduous or canine first molar and second molar and the difference in the mesiodistal dimension between the succedaneous teeth that is the permanent canine and the premolars okay so the mesiodistal width of these teeth is going to be greater than the mesiodistal width of the uh, permanent teeth which are going to replace it so this excess space that is going to see be seen after their eruption okay that excess space is known as the leeway space okay that is leeway space so now in our question here what we can see is that there is uh, this space that is present uh, mesial to the maxillary canine okay mesial to maxillary is the primate space that is seen in the maxillary arch okay in the mandibular arch uh, it will be so in the mag uh, mandibular arch it will be distal to the mandibular canine 